It is a first date. We're having date. a first date. It's kind of like a blind date. It is. But we saw his Instagram first. He yeah. stalked me a little bit. Yeah. That's just how dating is nowadays. It I is. might have listened to an episode or two yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening to some episodes. Our I'm like, keepers are so I was in your mind a little bit, mm-hmm. in your head. Definitely. That's I how stalked I like your, my I men. stalked your IG. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> what did you learn from stalking his IG? I was like, oh, he partied. I got back. I got way back. You know oh, what's funny? Oh, man. <laughs> there's, there's some good pictures <laughs> dating back. There's a lot of abs. As soon as I looked at his IG, I was like, I could tell he was a frat boy. (laughs) One, two, three, four. Hey, I'm MJ. And I'm Bree. Welcome to the Keeping It Casual podcast. I'm married. I'm a mom, so I get it. And Lord save me, because I am dating. We're more than just a sex-positive dating and relationship podcast. We want to share the perspectives on every kind of relationship while giving a voice to our listeners. Plus tons of tips to boss up your life. And sex life. Your Vegas girls are here for you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm up for anything. Very, I'm a very open person. Uh, yes. Oh, well, you did I the BDSM quiz, so <laughs> it's, it's fine with me. I've had a, I had a crazy college experience. So. Fuck yeah! Like I a- just had crazy times in my twenties because I used to be a groupie. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a stripper. Nice. <laughs> so things happened. I then w- I met I my once, husband. I once spent way too much money at a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> a frat boy, a stripper, and a, a groupie sit down for oh a podcast God. together. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I haven't been back to. Strip club sons. Yeah, right. It's like it's, it's a it's a danger zone. That's for my sure. boss loves them. He texted me. He was like, "The strip clubs are back open again," and I was like, "I'm proud of we you." We called immediately. We're like, "So what's the deal? Are the strippers in masks? Can you get lap dances? <laughs> what was the deal? What was the deal? They, they, they have are. to wear pasties and they have to wear masks." One of my friends, I don't know what strip <laughs> strip club it was out <laughs> at, uh, no. that they were at, but they said there was curtains up, like clear curtains at one of them out here. They're just like shadow dancing. Yeah. you know what I love. <laughs> Like you a pure, been, remember pure yeah. and shadow dancers? I think he would have been a little too young for it, but the OG had the shower scene. Oh, fuck yeah. Those were hot. That was the first club I worked at. I never went to OG's. I almost went there once after work. A bunch of my friends texted me like, you have to come to OG's. I was like, what the fuck is that? Olympic, <laughs> Olympic Garden. Garden. The OG <laughs> strip club. Well, it was cool because it had the guys upstairs, the girls downstairs. Mm-hmm. You could drink, so it became this big, sexy mingle thing. But they had the shower upstairs. And, and the guys was, would do shower scenes in yeah, it, and well, it was the, hot. The the girls the would girls too. too. They do like some tandem. Oh, it was so cool. But the only thing with OGs is they had no poles. And I was like, what am I going to do? So I got up there and did like the breakdance of windmill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what, like, what, you can't show off. Tr- well, tr- I mean. That's when you do a lot of like crawling and hair flipping. And one time my shoe flew off and like cracked the guy right in the face. And I was like really embarrassed. But. <laughs> He gave me my shoe in like five. He was like, here you go. I was like, okay. Well, I mean, I'm thinking like with yeah. pole, you do pole tricks for yourself and the other girls in the club, right? Yeah, like the guys don't care about pole. No. We, I don't know. Do you care if you see a girl on the pole or you no, want I'd ass in your her, face? Like, on my lap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. But, but do they, but when you're at the stage, are you like, oh, she's yeah. I guess, down. I guess flexible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's part of the conversation if it's just like the guy sitting around. Kay. And you're kind of like scouting out the girls too. Mm-hmm. So you know like who to sit next to. Oh my God. Yeah. This is such a good man's opinion. Okay, hour. I know. <laughs> it's our. It's our first. Uh, it's a, wow. Bachelor. It's our first. You're our first bachelor. bachelor. Yes. <gasps> wow. We've had some gentlemen. They've first been bachelor. In pretty like steady relationships and marriages. Oh, I've been a bachelor pretty much like my entire life. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been able to hold down a long term relationship. Ladies, they're we're overrated. Gonna get, we're gonna get the <laughs> dating. We're gonna get the dating profile and everything. Oh. You just hold on to your panties, okay? But first, <laughs> big shout out to our sponsor, Rose Dolly Beauty. Hey, it girl. is the month of Sylvia. Yes, and she started her own uh, makeup line. And she is going to be gifting somebody a, a highlighter and some lip gloss, a, yeah. little, a little makeup bundle. Yeah, just for doing that rating review on, on Apple Podcasts. And if you can't wait, you just go to Rose Dolly Cosmetics on Etsy and use the code KEEPERS20 at checkout. Absolutely. And another shout out to our big, beautiful sponsor, Like a Kitten. They are women owned and operated, and they're here to change your sex life with their sexual subscription boxes every quarter. And they have the one off boxes too. And they have their own line of vibrators, oh my which gosh. I I am loving that fly me to the moon. We're actually giving away a free vibrator this month. We we love our listeners and we want you to love yourself. Yes, rate and review on Apple Podcasts, join the Patreon, two ways to join, but you can get 20% off anytime like a kitten.com using code KEEPERS20. More on that later. Oh my gosh, you guys, we've just been sitting here. It's a first date. It is a first date. We're having date. a first date. It's kind of like a blind date. It is. But we saw his Instagram first. He 
just yeah. stalked me a little bit. Yeah. That's just how dating is nowadays. It I is. might have listened to an episode or two yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening to some episodes. I'm Our like, keepers so, are so I was in your mind a little bit, mm-hmm. in your head. Definitely. That's I how stalked I like your, my men. I stalked your IG. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> what did you learn from stalking his IG? I was like, oh, he partied. I got back. I got way back. You know oh, what's funny? Man. <laughs> there's, there's some good pictures <laughs> dating back. There's as a lot of abs. Yeah. As soon as I looked at his IG, I was like, I could tell he was a frat boy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that was the first thing I noticed. Before we introduce you, we are talking about Instagram. I have to throw this out. My boss's 16-year-old followed me on Instagram today, oh. and I felt very weird about it because if you... You should feel cool. No at all. My Instagram feed, there's a lot of pictures of me in lingerie on there from photo shoots <laughs> I've done. So I was like, oh, God, that's going to get back to my boss. And then my boss knows I do this, so I'm sure he doesn't actually care. <laughs> cool, sexy, and efficient, I think... <laughs> What a catch. I know. Who would be proud to have that assistant, right? (laughs) So, guess what, guys? We are on a first date. We're on a blind date. And we have a very fun encounter with the hottest new and upcoming podcaster in Las Vegas. That's right. Born and raised here in the Valley. Uh, He likes to sit down with entrepreneurs, creative types, and ambitious leaders across the city. He's all about that motivation, mindset, respect. And today, you get to know him on a personal level. Please welcome Jake. From State Farm? Not from State Farm. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Jake Gallen from the Guest List Podcast. Woo! Woo! Pew, pew, pew. I just want to throw out there, I was Jake for State Farm this last Halloween. Fantastic. <laughs> we I, dressed up as the Beastie Boys. <laughs> like Chris was the other one. Chris was M-C-A-R-I-P. You were fighting for the right to party? Yes, we yes, were. Yes, we actually, that's the Beastie Boys we did. I was Mike Deesh. Yeah. Chris was M-C-A and you were uh It was one of those Halloweens. <laughs> like, you, you're like, I got khakis. <laughs> throwing it together last second <laughs> seriously no we were because i was texting her i was like last year we were two broke girls and yeah. nothing can top that it was fabulous <laughs> extremely fabulous we were like how and are we gonna top this? and we did a live podcast show yes. r.i.p to the podcast events <laughs> <laughs> r.i.p to events uh, yeah thanks yeah. 2020 but yeah yeah jake from state that's perfect <laughs> that's great we're like is he is he not gonna like the jake from state farm joke is he gonna be like <laughs> I, I, I use it all the time especially when i was at omnia i would use it all the time <laughs> like what's up i'm jake from state farm did you see the Drake from State Farm commercial. I did see it. You know, <laughs> you know what was funny is I hadn't seen the new State Farm commercial. So when I dressed up as Jake from State Farm, people kept talking about a black Jake, and I was like, "No, I'm white." <laughs> yeah, I yeah. had no he, idea what they were talking about. You were like, about. "I'm a white, not a black." Yeah. <laughs> they did switch it up though. Yeah. They did. And then now they got Drake from State Farm <laughs> for over the Super Bowl, and I think Drake is fine. So yeah, he's Drake, man. He's, he's got, Drake. He's the swaggiest he's, dude in the. I mean, I loved him from Canada. Jimmy Brooks from. Degrassi in his wheelchair. I was like, fine. And then he became Drake. You can't, you can't beat the the Drake beats. Her three year old's all about like, you got any Drake? He's he's into the Tootsie Slide. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now that we've gone way off topic, okay. can you share a little bit about your podcast? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, uh, first, thank you for that introduction. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. That was, welcome. That was welcome. on point. So the guest list podcast it took me like a year to come up with that name. Cool. Hmm. I actually came up with the name one day I came home from work. I worked at Omnia Nightclub after I'd been spitballing the podcast names to one server for about seven months, and she just kept giving me the most like distasteful look every time I'd come up with oh, a name. Oh, yeah. Like one. Give, me, give us uh, one. You one were was like, like Vegas Originals, Vegas Staycation. Vegas Originals sounds like a like a roller derby team. I was thinking of <laughs> like Ooh. Netflix Originals, but Vegas Originals. Oh, like, I And like then that. you were thinking like the branding. Like yeah. I could do like a Netflix Original the, like font. And then it's just so blah. simple. I just got home one day after work and somebody was like hey can you put me on the guest list for tomorrow and i was like oh there it is Who, how many times a week did you get put me on the guest list at omnia so often yeah. we actually at the beginning like, we had we had guy. requirements <laughs> in the beginning but yeah. it's almost like you want to put them on there because there's like a type of prestige for it mm-hmm. yeah you know mm-hmm. it's, it, you're like a pseudo host in a, in a sense i hated at the radio station when people would message me that i haven't talked to in years and be like hey can you give me tickets to this can you get me on the con yeah can you get me into concerts that was our thing we're like oh this guy all the time you know what i mean yeah. there's always those people you're like no you can't go this week i could probably hook you up but no i don't <laughs> want to <laughs> yeah our r.i.p to the clubs it's gonna oh it's gonna be God. it's gonna be a little while till we come back but so, r.i.p to concerts so for people that don't know so you have the podcast but you were in the club yeah so i worked club. at omnia the last five years i've worked on the strip the last 10 
10 years. I worked wow. at Planet Hollywood Pool from 18 to 22. Started mm-hmm. as a lifeguard. Now we're here. My husband was a lifeguard, too. I yeah, was like, you that's, a lifeguard that's, at 18? That's just like the basic entry too. level to get that's into funny. the strip industry. Yeah, yeah. that's like basic yeah. entry. You Now you show up to work just completely hungover. You hide your drunkenness behind your sunglasses, sit on stand, get to just hang out. How Watch many all times the boobies. did you see people try to fuck in the pool? It was pretty often. Yeah. Pretty often. My brother told me that. He worked at the Golden Nugget Pool, and he was like, because that was an all-age pool, and he was like, there's not a day that went by that I didn't have to tell <sighs> people to not get it on in the pool in front of kids. In the pool, in the cabanas. They would close the... Uh, the <laughs> The, uh, the doors to the cabanas oh, yeah. but we'd have to yeah. like go in there so yeah. you'd, you'd like kind of like peer around like i'm coming in yeah. so you give us that give and me they don't care yeah. they're just like still just laying there you know like he's omnia, inside like, on, her and you're at like omnia all right. would happen all the time too you'd go into we'd call it the porter closet where they keep like the rags and the brooms and stuff and people would just be in there like girls giving blowjobs and people <laughs> bent over yes. Like. yes i know they're like here's an empty room let's just get in there people yeah. give, people are savage <laughs> nightclubs they're the worst Savages. I just stole like, my purse. It's just like bringing me back to my rehab <laughs> days from uh, at Hard Rock. Oh God! Or Ditch Fridays. So oh God, our, Ditch Fridays. Our radio station yes. hosted Ditch Fridays at the Palms Pool, and I had the, I hosted the radio show there for like five years, and it was a shit show. It was so great every I Friday. I just do not r- miss the suntan lotion fogged oh, water. Never, never get into the water <laughs> unless you're just like absolutely shit faced. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're it's, really a, it's, a, it's a last yeah. resort, but yeah. it is really easy to to pull chicks in the pool yeah. in, the, in the water because oh. everyone in there is just like YOLO mode yeah I know and, and, and people just roll up on you you're like who's rubbing on my booty you're like hey yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've okay. been finger banged at the rehab party <laughs> you're like, I'm like uh, uh. Yeah. Oh. You're, like, you're like in line for that slide at the at the hard rock yeah. pool and some guys behind you're like you want to go down together you're like yeah. Woo! <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're I, I prefer out. pools. Day clubs, I love much more than the nightclub scene. The nightclub, when people are at nightclubs, they're oftentimes angry because they've been drinking all day, or mm-hmm. they're like pulled out there with their friends. Oh, no. So or they were waiting in line way too long, and yeah. then they realize the drinks are twenty-two and then, dollars yeah, each. And it's also the nightclub; it doesn't open till ten thirty. People mm-hmm. don't really get there till eleven, one. and then the DJ comes locals on, know D- to show up at yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> D- the DJ comes on at one. People are usually leaving by two or three, so they're really packing everything, the whole partying into like three hours yeah. where if you're at like a day club you're there the entire day <laughs> do you miss day yeah. clubs or night clubs more the, I miss the, the day club the day clubs are fun but at omnia it's one of the most prestigious clubs in the yeah. united states we had like calvin harris Wasn't tiestos that, yeah. Wasn't that the Bieber's club he Be- opened? bieber did his 21st birthday there the first oh. year we opened he opened yeah. one club on this trip maybe i was he it, that was our first year that we opened he did his no, 21st birth- he did his 21st birthday there yeah he came right after like some roasts yeah. that he was part of yeah wow. uh, he was really cool he um in interesting guy he made all of the girls do the cleaning he didn't want any busters at the table so the girls had to like pour the drinks and carry the dirty drinks away wow he's like he's a man who likes his ladies no he's a man that doesn't like anybody taking his spotlight i guess he's like don't you bring that jake around here (laughs) (laughs) bring that jake up in here but, but here. nightclubs are cool. It's a good opportunity, and you can make very lucrative amount of money there. Especially, I was working there at 22, and I was in college still. So my first year at Omnia, I was still living at the fraternity house, and it was my last year in college. Mm-hmm. So I would like go work at Omnia, come home. There'd be people partying at 5 a.m. wanting to do drugs, but I'd go to bed, then go to class. But then there'd be like <laughs> a party the next night. It was just like an endless virtuous oh cycle. For and a long you time. have a liver still to to. Tell. Yeah, I had to take a break. I had to take a break. <laughs> almost three years because it got really really crazy after a while (laughs) it's uh, that nightlife i mean i understand like living in that that whole scene it's like you watch people go down you Mm -hmm. know you're like look at this dude he's gained 60 pounds in a year from all of like the vodka vodka and the all the drugs everyone who works there too is like supermodel so everyone there's just like extremely attractive the first few years everyone's like single hooking up with each other it's just like it's an it's an endless (sighs) non-stop cycle but it does make you kind of desensitized to attract of women mm-hmm. just because you're around them for so long and you have to be like a supermodel babe to get a <laughs> job at any of the nightclubs out there and those girls make bad yeah, they do. Yeah. They make more than strippers do. Yeah, Oof. it's a six-figure job. Easy. Sp- I don't know. My friend, my friend. I, have a, I was about to name her, and then I had to stop myself. She mm. would work at the clubs on the strip, and then she'd go to the strip club, and then she'd meet a sugar daddy and have him take her somewhere else. And oh, she yeah. was just like, we were in beauty school together, and she had Alexis. I was like, you don't work though. How do you have Alexis? <laughs> <laughs> and 
And she was like, you know, Roy bought it for me. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, Roy. There's so many sugar babies in Vegas. I actually saw an article a few years ago where Vegas had the highest per capita of sugar daddies to sugar babies. Sure. It was like one in 22. It was like something crazy. And the next city was like one in 200. These girls don't want to work, man. They're just chilling. Yeah. So the the guest list podcast came from, you know, your background, definitely. Yeah. So while I was at UNLV, I was in a fraternity um, I was in a Jewish fraternity, and after college, I tried to do start two different business. I owned an antique store with my father called Next Gen Pickers, and I co-founded an app called Chameleon Verify Network, which oh. fought ticket fraud. Oh, and so I was wow. I was a part of all these different social networks, and so I just realized, being born and raised out here, that the thing about Vegas and our manager at Omni used to say this all the time that you know Omni will bring the guests in, but what keeps them coming back is the people. Mm-hmm. And there's so many different interesting people out here. It's so diverse in so many different ways it's diverse politically economically uh, leisurely entertainment like so many options from so many different facets so i just wanted to talk to people and i've really grown a fascination for long-form conversation growing up most of my conversations with people were just always at least 30 minutes Mm -hmm. i used to always get in trouble in class for talking too much bad what is it citizenship grade and so when the nightclub shut down i decided to start i'd been thinking about it for two years and brought two nurses on and just started reaching out to all my different founder friends of different businesses and now it's evolved to going to record episode 100 in two weeks and oh, about 11 wow. in about 11 months yeah that so we're putting so work on yeah we're oh, good yeah, yeah. yeah well we were very impressed a dear friend of ours chris kim introduced us to mm-hmm. you and he's like this guy jake's doing some things and we're like he is doing things and yes. we're over here doing all the things too so <laughs> we were excited to have our very first bachelor on so ladies yes. continue listening uh go and drop that ig right now so they can uh, just pop on and jake gallon J. <laughs> A K E G A L L E N. Now, are you on any of the dating apps? I uh, used currently? to be on Bumble and Tinder. I haven't used them in a little while, ever since the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. I just haven't. I've been waiting until People get probably their shots. this summer. Yeah, <laughs> the shot. I'm not too worried about COVID. Yeah, uh, I had it right before the nightclub closed down. Really? Oh wow. But I've been kind of just like focusing on myself, and mm-hmm. now I do podcast full time and uh, crypto investing full time. So oh, I've been kind of okay. just focused on both of those. Excellent. Yeah, that's a that's an intense thing yeah my husband (laughs) knows all about that oh wow i have a question about bumble because we were kind of curious from the guy's point so bumble is the dating app where women go on and they have to make the first move do guys have to pay to be on that app no it's free it's free free for guys free for guys yeah free for guys it was like guys had to pay or something no bumble's about to ipo too they've been killing bumble and tinder and hinge are all free but you can pay for premium portions yeah i I felt like tinder's like all bots now last Mm. time i was on it it just seemed like fake accounts yeah see as a woman I, I haven't been on dating apps in years now wow yeah <laughs> seriously when we started this she was my online dating expert she's like let me let me break it down for you let me break it down for you <laughs> i always found more luck through twitter and instagram and the social media accounts. he was like oh that's a twitter? porn account on go. twitter let's go there. i I, I, cr- I created twitter in 2009 and when i first a ogs mm-hmm. ogs mm-hmm. remember going to mm-hmm. twitter jail and having yeah. to text 40404 <laughs> <laughs> but w- when i got into college i started college in 2010 i was telling all of my fraternity brothers like yo you have to get on this twitter app it's so easy to get laid on mm-hmm. here like you have a voice they just message you and it was just like so easy because there weren't that many people on it i've never been laid from twitter that's yeah. the first i've ever heard like twitter <laughs> is the game yeah. that's interesting now, now it's ca- now it's kind of moved over because back then there wasn't dm so they had yeah. to literally at you and it was like a public conversation yeah. so people were like very seeing, flirty. yeah seeing the flirting going on and so the people who were message you or they would tweet at you at UNLV all of the people in Greek life would meet up in the student union mm-hmm. and so you would see them tweeting at you then you would just walk up to them in the student union and it's a big game in real life That's I never had like a real college experience no we didn't we were like on the streets Lori, Lori. I, would be, I would walk up and be like what's up with you free for lunch <laughs> <laughs> what's up here's my card I teach pole dancing <laughs> oh you know I work for the radio station yeah that was you another ever, one too you ever need tickets you want to go to concerts yeah pulling like dude moves oh god yeah. I was such a dude back in the day i know all right we love playing the getting to know you game with our guests since it's our first date uh we want to throw some fun questions at you so we've curated them they're in the bowl here so we're just going to pick at random and go for it all right what's an automatic swipe left and swipe right okay there you go that's a good one um i i look at (laughs) (laughs) 
I look at pictures first before the bio. Mm-hmm. So to me, the bio doesn't do that much. Okay. So oh. yeah, I'm a li- we're all like, girl, we're like a whole hour <laughs> on the bio. No, right? <laughs> My bio was really cute. I made it like a definition when I had it. It was like Brie, noun, and then it just kind of like listed descriptions. I, I always felt me. like the bios were so quirky and the conversations on on dating apps are already quirky. So it's like... I made mine super quirky. <laughs> I, I, I gave a fun fact about myself. Like my favorite karaoke song is... But something by Prince, you know, I always gave like a fun fact about myself and then my definition and let it be. I would say a swipe. So it's been so long. Which one's yes? That's swipe. Right. Is yes. So uh, usually a swipe no is if they're not smiling or not showing teeth. Oh, so it's I, just yeah, duck face. like the duck, the duck yeah. face or this weird angle or far away. Because yeah. I think like a, a pretty smile is like very attractive. Yeah. And it shows it. Sho- yeah. it it shows self confidence. Yeah, you're like, what are they hiding behind there? What's going on? Mm-hmm. I'm, ar- yeah. I'm already tormented from the MySpace angles back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> They'd hold it up, you'd see them standing on like the tip of a toilet with a peace <laughs> yeah. sign. Oh god. And the duck lips. Yeah. yeah. I had my MySpace angles down. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> that was your high school days, huh? <laughs> high was, school, yeah. That was, I was like, hey, yeah. that was me <laughs> starting out in radio with MySpace. Yes, same. God. When is the last time you were kicked out of somewhere? Ooh. Dude, I went on a streak <laughs> so many I've been kicked out of so many different clubs and 7-Elevens in h- high school <laughs> <laughs> and jack in, the, jack in the boxes I think the last place I was actually kicked out of was probably Surrender Oh God! Surrender, surrender Beach Club at the win. Yeah, I literally was like, "What is surrender?" <laughs> that was like the so we used to call it SU render, like oh. Student Union Surrender. Mm-hmm. All of the UNLV kids, all the fraternities would get different tables for yeah. free, oh. and then all the sorority girls would just show up and bounce around the tables. Oh, okay. So we thought it was just like hot chicks got tables for free. <laughs> you get a girlfriend group of eight, and you're like free table, free bottle. Yeah, so it's they the fraternity for... for the fraternity guys. Yeah, you just show up uh, mm-hmm. with even so they ratio did it for or hot better. Young guys too. <laughs> We thought they we know were how it works. They know how because it works. we were ladies. I never knew that the guys yeah, got the it. Yeah, the college kids. Yeah. Shut up. I got kicked out of the gold spike, and I can't <laughs> go on any of their properties anymore. I'm <laughs> 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 banned. Remember, we got kicked out of that Will Smith comedy show. <laughs> we did get kicked. <laughs> out of a Will Smith. <laughs> we went to this comedy show and like we were trying to see this comedian. We wanted to talk to her. We we're trying to get her on the podcast. We were like, she's right there. We want to talk to her. So this bouncer was like, we're like, we'll just kind of walk by. I was by, messaging like, with her, but she was like, hold on, I'm working. Just wait right there. Like I was messaging her on Instagram because she got us on the, yeah. the guest list. Hey. hey. <laughs> I see this one guy. He's like yoked. He's like, nobody's getting through. And I just kind of stand there like I'm minding my business, like whatever. He's like, y'all going to have to move on. I was like, <laughs> he had to like literally like and then we went to the me. bar <laughs> and we stood there for a second he's like no you're gonna have to leave and i was like what? i was like and she was just like <laughs> i was like no he was like we're we gonna have to fight or something i was like i'm gonna fight him i was like i'm getting this interview <laughs> we were at top golf too it like so we yeah. almost got kicked out of top golf but will smith was real sitting, premiere yeah will, will smith, smith was sat behind right behind us. us some comedy thing anyways I it was forgot to, about that. I did too. <laughs> you're not a true Vegas local if you haven't been kicked out of somewhere. Damn on the right. Street. I yeah. think so. That's how you know you're going hard. Yeah. You haven't challenged a 12 foot bouncer. You're like, what are you going to do? <laughs> He's like, flick your hat off. Get I got out kicked here. out of LAX once because. Oh. Yes. It, that wasn't my fault. Actually, every time I've been kicked out of somewhere, I've been guilt by association. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, that one, the LAX one, I was there because Lady Gaga was performing. and oh. At LAX? Yeah, it was right before she blew up. I was up. thinking of the airport. You're talking about old school. Yeah, nightclub. LAX that was, nightclub. That was uh, <laughs> Luxor. Luxor. Yeah. We get shoved into a booth, me and the girls that I'm with. We didn't ask for one. Like, we get a free bottle, and then the guys next to us at the booth next to us buy us another bottle. So we're two bottles of Goose Deep. Uh, three girls, yeah. two bottles of Goose Deep. Awesome. Didn't know that one of us was on the uh, antibiotics that say, do not drink on them. So at one point we're dancing on the pole and then the next second she's sitting on the ledge and then the next second she's <laughs> over, throwing up all over the VIP area and we get kicked out. Oh. That bitch. I know. There's always that hot mess friend like you love them. They're so much fun until you took them out and you're like, this motherfucker's going to go over the edge. I had a friend, she was always taking off her shoes. They're like, you gotta put your shoes on. And her like black feet in the air. I'm like, you're embarrassing me at Trist. <laughs> she got <laughs> taken out of the club in a wheelchair. Oh, no. <laughs> the, <laughs> the wheelchair, I know you've seen that a lot. The wheelchair yeah, we have a few, is so wait, embarrassing. Have a few in the back. 
back. <laughs> oh my god! Like when you have to get wheelchaired out of the club. But she never. wasn't even my friend. <laughs> she was a friend by association. She was just like I had just met her that night. Uh. Type, and I was like, this bitch got me kicked out of the club, and I don't even know her. <laughs> when, when I worked at PH, we would take pictures of all the guests, and we had this like portfolio of like hundreds of people from Planet Hollywood, <laughs> just like oh, get, get wheeled out, out. out. Yeah. You, and especially it was when like you a see joke it. between the staff. Oh yeah, when you see it shit midday, you're like, oh didn't hydrate <laughs> he's never gonna make it to the Especially club tonight. the people that just show up in the club or at the pool and within the first 30 minutes are getting kicked out yeah and you're just like what happened <laughs> oh my god i saw the best meme since easy. we're all on vegas clubs i saw the best meme the other day that was like men vegas can't even handle us and it's like vegas yeah i've never seen four guys yeah. in button down <laughs> shirts from macy's <laughs> with <laughs> the flame thing <laughs> wait four hours in line at a club pay for a 20 dollar drink and then lose $25 at the Golden Nugget while they all share a bedroom. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, See ya. respect. <laughs> no, it's that the black and tan panel shirt. Oh, you know what I'm God. talking about? It's like yes. collared and it's got those stripes. It's yes, the worst it's terrible. Shirt. That or Ed Hardy shirts. Oh. It's very common. <laughs> The Ed Hardy. And those bedazzled butt jeans. Yeah. True, true religion jeans with oh. Ed Hardy shirts. If yeah. a guy was wearing bedazzled butt jeans, it was like, get the fuck out of my face. I don't know. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, my worst. God. Okay. Let's see what's next. What is a weird thing a girl has said on a dating chat? So, like, on a dating app? Yeah. 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 Hmm. I have one. Go for, you go first. Back in the day, I was on OK Cupid. That old was school. Old school, yes. My 20s, I was on OkCupid. Okay For some reason, I don't know why, but men like to message me and tell me about their kinks before they've even said hello. Mm -hmm. This is a weird thing, a weird thing that I've lived with for a very long time. You're so <laughs> soft, I just want to rub lotion all over your Oh, like yeah, there was that guy who said he didn't know how to massage, but he wanted to rub lotion all over my body, You're and like, I was like... No. <laughs> but this guy tops him. I've never told this story on the podcast before. So he was messaging me and he was like, look, I'm very into wearing lingerie and being feminine. And I like to be a feminine person and be dominated by a woman who's a little bit more masculine. And I was like, look, I'm a very feminine girl. You're not going to get that from me. But continue. And he goes, and, you know, I really like to... <laughs> Oh, shit. I don't even know if I can see <laughs> Come on. I really want somebody to change the tampon in my man pussy. So he would walk around with tampons <laughs> up his asshole and have girls change them. That is... I was horrified. Behavior. <laughs> <laughs> we are kink friendly on this show. We don't want to kink shame anybody, but, but don't we just shaming you. <laughs> but don't just come out and say that to somebody you've never met. <laughs> Maybe somebody will do that for you, but you can't just pop out on like this is what I want. You ready? It's <laughs> going full send right off. The, right yeah, off the side, <laughs> she's the gonna love this send. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember just being like block. Good lord, <laughs> scary. I remember a call a call college one I had this is another college one a girl that I matched with that I went to college with but I hadn't met, met her yet and she led with have you had sex with any of my sorority sisters oh yeah. and well, at, the, at that point at that, at that point it's a lose-lose though <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if, like, if, if I have and I say no she's gonna find out mm -hmm. or she already knows and she oh. has it programmed yep. <laughs> yep she's like oh this guy and her friend's like oh Jake <laughs> <laughs> oh I know him <laughs> and it's like maybe Maybe in that small off chance she's kinky and it like leads to like a threesome, oh. like the thing that the guy always wants. Yeah, you're like, like ah. she's like, oh, perfect. I've always wanted to make this happen. Yeah, <laughs> call Karen over. We're ready. Let's do this. She's sitting next to me right now. All of a sudden, you know they were. You know that there was a sorority girl sitting next to her, like swiping with her. Yeah, that's true. I was thinking like, cause I kind of bro hops every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a bro hopper. It's very like kind of <laughs> known that I do that. Um, Has that ever deterred you from a guy who's had sex with one of your friends is it is, is it a case-by-case -case basis it, it would for me it, it yeah. would for me I i'd be like would. nah nah i don't know i think it'd be a case-by-case -case basis for me because like there was one because we both like ended up hating her because she sucked so yeah <laughs> yes i hooked up with a, a guy who oh yeah, yeah used no, to no, be no, friends no. with uh, his girlfriend but she was a bitch to me and so, sucked to him. So we were like, yeah. The one, <laughs> the one situation that you got to see unfold at the concert, mm -hmm. I hated him, not her. Yeah. 
I ended up just being like, dude, how many girls you fucking that I know? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I didn't even hate him. I just kind of laughed about the whole situation. I was just kind of like, okay, because I had just met my now ex-boyfriend at the time, and I was, like, all smitten and in love. But Because yeah, I feel like for, for most guys, it generally doesn't matter. <laughs> I, trust me, yeah. I've noticed because I bro hop. Yeah. <laughs> the, guy, the girls, there's like, there's, like, that little code of, like, you don't want to be that or that but if a bitch did you wrong and her man was hot and now y'all everybody's single you're like whatever <laughs> so it, dep- it depends on the woman's relationship with the other woman absolutely. most More of my girlfriends yeah. are yes. in long yes, absolutely t- most of my girlfriends are in long term relationships if you think about it yeah and I would not hook up with any of their boyfriends Girl. have I hooked up with their boyfriend's yeah. friends sure but <laughs> 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 my ex-boyfriend <laughs> exactly yes. pass on the bowl can we pause for a second just to say uh, I want to do a quick cheers Bree made delicious mocktail tonight in Jake's Thank honor you. This is amazing. because it is his birthday you guys Cheers. how old are you 29 Woo! there Let's it is go. and this is good it's like a um a blueberry blush lemonade yes we, we doing made things. a stupid name for it <gasps> okay um, i'm so I'm excited, excited for I'm this excited. question <laughs> because it's something i ask a lot of guys <laughs> and i usually get the same response if a girl sends you nudes before you met her do you show your fraternity brothers <laughs> It's it's generally <laughs> <laughs> we know the answer. Just say it's, it. You're not gonna it's, get in trouble. It's gen- yeah, it's generally yes. If I don't know her, then yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you sent nudes yeah. before you met? A girl in person too. Have I? I don't send nudes. No. No, because I th- boring. It's not. No, it's not boring because it, it's easier to get them over. Because oh. now, now they're more. They're generally more horny or they're more interested. Disagree. Have they asked? Have they asked? Yeah. Yeah. So and I say want? you have to come down here. What do they want? They're like, send me a picture. They say s- send nudes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'm just like, you have to come down here. Okay. Generally, I, generally works. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, good for you. Do they like send you some to entice you, and then they're like, now you have to send some. You're like, no. I've done that. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Interesting. Don't call me. This but, is but you're still getting you're still getting what the point of it is. Yeah. You yeah. know? So yeah. it's like I'm just expediting the yeah. <laughs> the situation. You know why I, I wouldn't go for that? Because I'd be like, Oh, he probably has a small dick if he doesn't <laughs> want to send anything. <laughs> Literally that's what I would think and I'd just be like, All right. I know, you're like, prove it now. But <laughs> is, is there like a sexy way for a guy to send a nude? Like, if you I, ask mm. for it, yes. We did recently see a dating app profile where a man was... He did side dick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what is this like silhouette photo? He was like sideways, and all you saw was like this bulge. You didn't see the tip. It was just kind of like a bulge thing, and we were all like, hmm. Hello, side dick. Because <laughs> I, I, I've, I, I've had this conversation with women before, and most women are hot, like, there, there's no like glorious angle, really. No. It's like, what am I going to... Do I have to put something in the background? Do I want me to put a cape on it? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> don't do not do the direct TV remote yeah. comparison with your dick. Well, I hate that one. Well, girls have boobs. We can send boobs and they always look great. You know, but a guy, it's like, if, if, if we were what? only working with the pussy, you'd be like, okay, here it is. You'd be like, whoa. Is she <laughs> That's not. You know what I like? I like um, lead. the underwear. Oh, yeah. The underwear shape. The shape in the underwear. You wear the tight underwear. You could see a little bit of what's going on in the underwear. Oh, uh, I've hot. done I've done those before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's hot. Just like okay. full, full nude. No. I, yeah. I, know, I know how women work and it'll be used against me if anything goes it's wrong true we're showing all our friends <laughs> <laughs> immediately oh. <laughs> yes. but yeah in the in the boxers is hot yeah or like hmm. the tight like the boxer briefs because yeah. if they're in just regular boxers i'm like i can't see anything what's that yeah <laughs> of course it has to be the marky mark or, style or the side <laughs> dick <laughs> <laughs> like that was to get on board with side <laughs> dick <laughs> <laughs> it was good we'll have to show you a picture later what we're talking about there's, there's gonna have reference. to be like a template or something <laughs> 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 We'll, we'll give you a reference later. You'll be like, oh, I see what he's working with there. <laughs> Do you respect this angle? <laughs> because it's not showing anything, but it's showing everything. And somehow it has not been flagged on Tinder. When I saw that, I was like, how does that on his Tinder profile? We did a dating game on our on Patreon. Our, on our Patreon, we did a dating game, and it was really funny. It just um, showed off how much of a boss I am at picking out bullshit profiles. Because <laughs> she was like, which guy on this dating app has a gun in his picture? And I was like, that one. Which guy has a girl in his pictures? And I was like, the young mean. one <laughs> and i was like this one you know i just kind of went through it and i got every single one of them right except one that's why you're the online expert right, right. except for i haven't been on them two <laughs> years because i went from relationship to don't want to to relationship to I, I haven't been on it during quarantine but i have to feel like it's probably a cesspool of just like shame and, and 
<laughs> boredom. <laughs> boredom and it's despair. The s- it's the same exile. ones. My sister was here last night. We yeah. were looking. I said, have you been on? We were looking at all kinds of apps. I was like, oh, there's something called Taste Buds. Where you can match with music. There's something it's called. It's all the same people. That's what she said. She goes, all the I'm same not even getting on this. This is bullshit. I was like. That's why I like. <sighs> I guess Bumble or Hinge are the better ones. Yeah, I feel like Bumble has the best quality. Bumble had better quality when I was on the apps. She basically got on like plenty of fish and she's like, the same people on Tinder, same people on Hinge. She pulled both of them up. She's like, I've seen all these guys. My my friend got catfished on uh, plenty of fish, got robbed. Oh Oh my God. Yeah, it got tied up. Tell (laughs) Tell the story while we pulled. Wait, he got tied up. He got tied up. Yeah, this girl told him to to meet him in a parking lot. That was was the first red red flag. He shows up there and this guy gets out of the car with him and they tie him up and take him to his house they make him empty out his safe they do his coke his they drink his alcohol tie him up steal his money take him to a bunch of his atms withdraw all of his money and, and they, get this they end up <gasps> catching him because the forensics team gets his saliva off the bo- off the liquor bottle that he <gasps> left at his apartment Shut. they ended up catching him yeah oh and these people God. had done it to like multiple people in the city wow so she showed up with the dude and straight yeah, up robbed his, ass. robbed his ass what's he gonna yeah. do tell the police they stole my coke and guns yeah. and <laughs> my weed they're like <laughs> that's fucked up yeah, oh my is. god yeah we've we've had a friend that just got kind of like hustled online like send me some amazon gift cards send me an iphone send me this <laughs> they're like okay you know and i was like no but oh. i can i come to the point where i'm like that guy's married or in a relationship like that's how i am with my friends if they're yeah. talking to somebody i'm like how long is it taking him to get you get back to you oh he only wants to meet you here oh that's because he has a baby mama back at home <laughs> that he ain't telling yeah. you about or he keeps setting up times to meet yeah. never does or you've never like yeah. actually video chat we had a couple of catfish episodes yeah. they're really uh juicy but that is a whole episode we yeah it was, that, that the whole story was on the news too this Jesus. is one of my coworkers, probably like two years ago oh my god That's get crazy. him on the podcast yeah. <laughs> who's ready for the super sexy monthly swag giveaway me all right tell them what they got they get their like a kitten purrs like a kitten vibe it is a multi-use oh, yes. vibrator yeah it is Woo. and bonus they get the rose dolly beauty glam pack and the winner is one right off itunes keeping it real with mj and brie i love these girls they always bring the heat and taboo to the table with just the right amount of comedy entertaining informative sexy in the now keep it casual ladies your loyal keeper jay ah thank you jay thank you so much go ahead and email us over your address feedback at keeping it casual podcast.com and you can get sex toys shipped to you seasonally in a box filled with complimentary goodies to take your sex life to the next level at like use code keepers 20 at checkout for 20 percent off and remember you can get into our super sexy monthly giveaways by rating and reviewing on apple podcasts or by joining the patreon at the five dollar level and up links for everything at keeping it casual podcast.com and now back to the show what is a non-sexual thing a girl can do that turns you on? We love this question. Love this. Intellect really turns me on. Okay. Or actually, and a woman who just knows what she wants. And like, it's not like an attitude, but like an empowered woman really turns me on. Yeah. I, I don't like like submissive women, really. It's mm. not. Hmm. I feel like it's, I feel like submissive women are just like easy. And it's not as much of. However. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> what about a submissive woman in the bedroom? And the bedroom works. Oh, yeah. Okay. The bedroom works. But you just you because most women who are powerful mm-hmm. outside of the bedroom tend to be more submissive in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. But I think he's talking about yeah. like the way she carries her. Yeah. She's carries empowered. Herself, like yeah. you can tell yeah. a girl that's just kind of like Ex- someone, someone that's empowered, like, but it's like I'll let you do what you want in the bedroom, mm-hmm. but yeah, don't fuck with me on the street. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. Out, out here in the city, I feel like there's a lot of, and this isn't like an attack on any women yeah. or anything, but there's a lot of like submissive women. It's like a type of it's a type of way to stroke a man's ego who generally has like a lot of money or is powerful and try to. Okay. Work their way into into the, into that house. I've seen it happen. I don't know any of those of girls. <laughs> No, not definitely not our style. I feel like this is a time to pause and yeah. get into the BDSM quiz. Yes. Because a lot of what you were saying, we just flashed quick on your profile. And um, you guys, you know how when we started the episode, our first, we took this BDSM quiz, right? And we're like, this is fun. So we, we would give it to our guests and they would share it and stuff. So Jake has taken it. <laughs> yes. Did you learn anything? Don't, don't yeah. tell the results because yeah, we have some we have I did. Some responses I did learn a little bit, you. actually. You did. Yeah. See, I didn't, re- I feel like I didn't learn anything about myself. Like when I took it, I was like, yeah. 
<laughs> yep, that's me. Sounds <laughs> right. <laughs> But I'm I, that switch. Well, <laughs> I'm not that switch. I'm, I'm that, that switch. I'm that brat. <laughs> <laughs> but like I, my my whole thing when I took it, I was just like I had um I had a very good partner when I was about 24, 25 ish, who was very big in the kink community, and he taught me a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, so when I when I took that quiz, I was like, oh yeah, that's everything he and I kind of like figured out on our own anyway. So interesting. Yeah. She had somebody take her down that path. I was pretty like okay. I, I knew I was a switch. That was my top one. So what we want to do is look at your BDSM quiz here, and we're going to pick out the top three that are very interesting, and Bree's going to give you some uh, kink feedback. Okay, huh, so kink let's feedback. go. Here, so kink feedback with Bree. We're going we're gonna to share his. <laughs> we're like gonna a share, subsection. Yeah, we're going to share his top at the end. Okay, so yeah. do you want me to go through? Oh, Daddy, Mommy. <laughs> yeah, what's that one all about? Daddy, Mommy is liking Daddy play, so he likes to be called Daddy, or he likes to call a girl Mommy. So is that a more? That's a more dominant thing whether yeah and and being like that's more of like kind of a switch vibe where you're like all right we can play you're in charge and bossing me around right yeah mm-hmm. it's a, but like i had a dominant and i actually had to stop this because i don't like to call guys daddy in bed mm-hmm. but i had a dominant who liked to be called daddy and i was like i will call you sir or i will call you nothing <laughs> <laughs> And he was just like, okay, well, I guess I don't get to be called daddy then. <laughs> so, yeah, that's daddy mommy play. Oh. Degrader. Oh. I'm a fan. Is that like more in the dirty talk way? Yeah. Or like, yeah. Mm. explain, explain. I think it's a, a little bit more in the maneuvers. Okay. The play and the actual sex. Frat mm. boys. Yeah. <laughs> get a little aggressive yeah. and like get down there. So, you are also a brat tamer. That makes sense. Mm. That makes sense. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Always on the search for one of those. <laughs> <laughs> she was the brat. We had our, it was episode five, yeah. Sex Talk with, with a, a Brat, brat and, and a switch. switch. One of our hottest episodes. Mm-hmm. One of the top, I don't know if it's the title or just what was going on, <laughs> but it was like. It popped off and we were like, I right. guess. <laughs> That's kind of when it was like, you guys are a sex relationship podcast now. And we were like, oh, all right. I <laughs> guess we, we are. just keeping it casual. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now let's go to the top three. Mm-hmm. Number three, experimentalist. Oh. So, you know what? When we did the uh, sex personality types, there's an experimentalist one. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's another one we have to send you. What's your sex personality type? Interesting. That's a fun one. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just generally an experimenter in life. I always say yeah. I'll try anything twice because the first time you, you can be persuaded into it. Yeah. And so mm-hmm, you may mm-hmm. not know. So And then dominant. Number okay. two. Yes. So he likes to dominate. Okay. Brat uh-huh. taming. Whatever. Uh-huh. Daddy mommy. Makes uh-huh. sense. But number one. A switch. He which is that switch. Interesting, which I find interesting because you do have a lot of. He's a more dominant. Y- you're a more, more dominant, dominant switch because you're a more dominant switch. I am I more dominant say. switch, yes. I, I boss that guy around in there. I th- <laughs> she does. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, in and out of the bedroom. <laughs> but I, I saw Rope Bunny in there. A oh. rigger. So rigger. You, he had rope, rigger. You're rigger. He's a rigger. And I was like, the what bunny. is that? Which one's that? You so, like to tie a girl up. Mm. And then, yeah, and then I like to be tied up. So there's, do- there's dominating. You know, the, you like it both, but you seem to lean heavy, heavier on the domination side. Yeah, the, the tie-up thing are some of the few toys I've actually used. I haven't experimented with that many toys to begin with. I think you we should ca- get a I subscription th- from Like a Kitten. I think we're <laughs> gonna get. I think we should gift him something. I have in the room. I, I think it's because I really <laughs> haven't had a long-term relationship, so a lot of them are like one night stands or flings of mm. a certain months and those See, tend, those tend to be certain months are when you're supposed to do your experimenting i feel like well but some of them are just like not ready for it right mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> i've never had that issue i'm like hey <sighs> you want to try this to be to be in a new relationship we're gonna just get the let out be like let's do it all <laughs> you know like god bringing I- it into a long-term relationship has been fun but luckily yeah, an experimentalist as well back there so we're like and i i only own i owned a pair of handcuffs when i lived at the fraternity house mm-hmm. but so i can't see you like owning vibrators at the fraternity yeah. house i yeah. feel like that would go weird <laughs> yeah. really really quick just like there, guys you would be surprised if the thing. random weird sex toys that would pop up though randomly yeah. but in would, the the, main would room. it be girls that brought them over girls brought them mm-hmm. like random to- like random like fuck around gifts for the brothers like oh, <laughs> you just uh. gift and they just like linger around and then they disappear all of a sudden i think <laughs> men need to be more comfortable with sex toys because there are actually plenty of sex toys out there for men like we we talked with the owner of the like a kitten who's our sponsor mm-hmm. and she's talking about sex toys she's like i think a lot of women just expect men to know what to do with them right sometimes we don't even know we're like what the fuck does this thing do so do you find with sex toys with with a partner do you enjoy like 
like playing around with sex toys like say not just dildos and maybe vibrators or do you feel kind of like i'm not really sure yeah i'd be more on the uncertain side okay so if a girl sat like a an anal plug in front of you would you be like okay (laughs) and that's a lot of self-explanatory too but i think vibrators can be like well i don't know so what we were talking about is like what's really smart play is like mutual masturbation like so she can show you how she's using it and then you're watching you're like yeah. seeing that se- that's sexy too yes you're, you yes. like mutual masturbation yeah respect yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know i preach about it so much on the show and i feel like i'm the only one that's like guys masturbate next to each well, other when, women are just beautiful in general <laughs> yeah and so to, to see a woman masturbating it's it's definitely a turn on yeah yeah and it, and for it, sure i feel like with the vibrator it's definitely going to teach you some things and also for a woman you realize like oh he's grabbing his balls like that okay that's <laughs> You yeah, know, like I feel like a man masturbating is not attractive at all. It's hot. It can be hot. It's hot. I guess if in the moment, doing though, it, it for you. Be. Yeah, yeah. Until they hit that face at the end, you're like, oh, what is that? See, but I don't, I don't <laughs> like <laughs> jerking. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you think about it the, too. The face like, twitch. With with mutual masturbation, somebody's usually telling a story too. Oh. I like you set the mood mm. and you just tell like a dirty story, like I'm gonna do this to you later. But you know, yeah. definitely are a fan of that. So just you know, just speaking from a men's point of view, it's like, yeah, I don't know what to do with those vibrators. So ladies, we have to show the men what to do. Show them what to do. Do sexy stories. I, I know some of my vibrators, like, I'm like, it's supposed to be for going up inside of you. And I'm like, I don't want to use it that way. I want to use be, it It could be way. intimidating, too, to be yeah. honest. And then I think women don't actually know how to use their sex toys on a man, too. Like, it doesn't oh, just. Oh, that's I, a good I, question. Yes. No, I think they don't. That's why I'm a big fan of the vibrating blowjob. That's <laughs> See, <laughs> like I, I, I'm still I'm still questionable around the, the vibrator on a man. Okay. I I well, see, this is this is how. I've I've heard different different things from different people though. Okay, so, mm-hmm. so that's why I that's why I say the vibrating blowjob. So we actually did it in one of our commercials, and our yeah. sponsor was like, "Oh my fucking god, I didn't even think of that. That's amazing." <laughs> <laughs> so what you do is you take it and you put it like right here, and it just gives a little extra to the blowjob. Interesting. Yes, it's also good for anal play. It's kind of something you would put on that Just a area. Little, a little rim job. And it's not about putting it in there. It's no. about putting pressure on it with the vibrator. And it's like, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Or even on the uh, on the taint a little bit. Just yes. a little, little slide. Don't be afraid. Have fun with also, it. Also, don't be afraid of cock rings. What do you think of the- Cock rings? What do you think of yeah. cock rings? Have you tried? I have not tried that. Hmm. No. Like a Prince Albert type thing? No, it's no. like a- Not it's a like piercing. Not a piercing. Not a, not a piercing. It's a vibrating. Usually there's like a little bullet oh, on top that vibrates. Yeah, okay. You put it on. I've say, yeah, I've you put it at the base. Most most men that I know have used them don't say it is very uncomfortable, but it's it constricts the penis a little bit to stop blood flow so you don't come as fast. Ah, <laughs> Interesting. I, so yeah. I actually just had a gentleman on my podcast, and he would be great for this show. His oh. name's Jeff Abraham. He runs Promescent. Have you heard of this? It's a sexual oh, wellness company. Yes, yes. It uh, keeps uh, it's the delay keeps, spray. Yeah, keep, the please. delay spray. Yeah. Connect, yeah, so connect us. Supplied me with it. Ha- haven't used it yet because of. COVID. COVID, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll run with that. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah. But I've talked to a few people who have used it, and they seem that it works, and it did make them last longer. And doesn't it kind of, what I heard is what it does kind of numbs you a little bit. It's numbs, but it doesn't leave like a coat because it's absorbed. Okay. That's the patent technology behind it. But you still it. don't lose sensation. You don't lose sensation, yeah. And so I've had, yeah, a few, yeah. few guys said that they didn't lose any sensation, lasted longer. No, and that's cool. So, that's yeah. cool. They said it is a little awkward when you're like getting ready and it's getting hot and heavy and you're fooling around and, you just and then like you have to like <laughs> spray it <laughs> yeah See, i would i you know how you could easily do it is just like kind of do a quick spritz right as you're putting lube on too yeah but you do have to make sure it's like after oral if you're gonna do oral oh uh, so not flavored yet yeah it's not mm. flavored yet it, it just Jeff said it could leave like a slight numb sensation on the woman. She's like, oh, she's but it does, but it, do, but it does, yeah, but yeah. it doesn't affect the woman during penetration. Interesting. Okay. So guys have to learn to do the the spray uh, the way ladies have learned to do the panty hide when you wear the wrong panties because you didn't expect to hook up, so you do the quick panty take off. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You're like, well, I'm just gonna turn off the light. I'm just gonna do a little quickie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The panty hide. Well, we talked about we talked about like um, when we used to go out and like the hoe days right and you're like i'm not gonna be a hoe tonight so i'm not gonna shave my legs or i'm gonna wear these i'm gonna wear these not cute hook up bubble pants and, and you always end up oh, up. Like, oh god now i had like crazy unshaved leg sex does that matter to a it guy it doesn't matter <laughs> what, it, what, if you're it? if you're in the bedroom it's it's game okay, over so that but point, like, you, you could it? you could have hair and it, <laughs> it doesn't matter 
hotter. Is it hotter because you're like, oh, she wasn't expecting to fuck tonight and she came home with me? <laughs> mm. Mm. Or, or you could think like, wow, this girl's no hygiene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. See, that's what I would think the whole but time. I'd be like, same. oh my God, I'm but so sorry. I didn't I, expect I this. I didn't shave. The, the heat of the moment, though, you're not paying attention to it or you just look over it and then maybe in the morning you're, when you're going for ground two and you're sober <laughs> and you're like no. feeling and you're like, wait, <laughs> how did I miss this? That was like, you had, I mean, when you go out to the club, though, you are, f- you, you're to the nine. Yeah. Everything mm-hmm. is shaved and cleaned and lotion and you're just like ready. But we'd have to slow ourselves down because we were just too, it was too easy. We're like, <laughs> we have to stop. We have to shave the legs. When they started having poles at all of the nightclubs, I was like, I'm going to wear a skirt tonight because I'm not getting on the pole. I would always, <laughs> me and my friends always end up on the pole. Like, and then you're the wildest one there. Then there's like polka dot undies <laughs> just like right up in the air. <laughs> like, what, where'd MJ go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the pole, like you can't keep me from the pole. So, so you're leaving, still you're to this leaving, day. You're like pseudo, <laughs> yeah. you're leaving like pseudo post-it notes to yourself. Yeah, to not hook up with someone. Yeah, that was what we would do. Oh God, and it's I've just done some dumb stuff. Like I'm not fucking anybody tonight, so I'm gonna not put on lotion. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Like I just like I make up the weirdest <laughs> things, and it's like, and then I still do, and it just becomes nonsense. Yeah, ladies, just don't do it. Okay. Get yourself ready as if you're gonna fuck every time, guys. Too, please handle it. Oh, trim it up. Let's man, go. Oh man, you gotta go for. Manscaped. Yeah, uh, you gotta buy the buy their product. It's great. However, I don't is that, want. Is that a product? Manscaped? Yeah, it's like a little lawnmower. It like doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little manscaping is good, but like. Don't don't shave it all, man. The the full on. No, don't they, do the they have like they have certain. It's like certain numbers. Oh, on okay. It. Yeah. All right. So you don't go just like. Don't go. Back. Yeah. Don't <laughs> go bare. Leave that's that. I I'm the one that's supposed to be bare. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because then you don't want the. I think I think stuff. porn has skewed that because most yeah. of the guys in porn are just like it's bare usually. That's true. Cause so they think it so, makes so them look the, bigger. So since everyone watches so much porn now, you're just like you <sighs> think you're a porn star. People's, excuse people's view on sex so oh much. Oh my gosh. That's why you watch ethical porn like our girl that we've just paid for erica lust yes erica have you heard of erica lust I have not. it's very tasteful like beautiful a series like an episode you could watch yes. it's it's very cool you can get a free movie if you go there <laughs> erica lust, lust remember that one all right let's jump back into yes. the game are you having a good time i'm having a great time okay. i right. wish we could go longer i know, <laughs> I know. we were waiting we were been waiting for this so you know when we come on the guest list like you're gonna have we're gonna to, roll for like two hours we're fantastic gonna, we're gonna have to <laughs> get into some uh my longest episode is actually with jeff it was two and a half hours really yes. really what jeff does vegas jeff no. abraham the, the, the promessing guy promessing yeah, yeah. Wow. we're talking about sex for like an hour and a half i can't wait <laughs> sounds like my life I can't <laughs> wait. oh here we go when it comes to foreplay do you give or receive first? Do you wait to get it, or do you just drop it like it's hot? I think I'd give it first. You're usually really? f- you're usually feeling on the woman first. Mm-hmm. De- um, it depends where it goes, because jeans are sometimes it's tough to get off, or whatever the situation <laughs> depends on how you're laying on the bed, or if you're standing up, wherever you are. Like it's easier to go under the shirt if you're in public, or just feel like it depends on where you're at too. Uh huh. So majority of the time you're gonna go down on her first. Yeah. Before, we, Unless she's a little brat who doesn't let you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We found that in our lives, we tend to do that as well. We mm-hmm. go down first because we feel like that's a power move. It is. A I power prefer move. to please first. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's me. I'm like, oh, now I can just lay back because I did so good. Exactly. <laughs> like if it, like the blindfold massage. Well, I, right? I feel like when you're when you're going f- down first, you're setting the precedent for yeah. f- the entire period. Yes. Yes. So yeah. if you go down there longer, you're probably sex is gonna last longer. Yes. You're gonna mm. be in there longer. The heat of the moment. Yeah. If it's shorter, then it, it feels like hurried. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if you're waiting on her to go first, unless she's like, no. Mm-hmm. Do you stop her, or you're like, no. <laughs> I like it, a little rustle back and yeah, forth. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to please you first. <laughs> Do you give in? I think you have to, that's when you have to be a little aggressive. Yeah. Okay. The Ooh. dominant side is coming <laughs> out. All right. He's like, nah. And that would be hot because that's usually my move is to go first. And sometimes, ugh. You know, remember the guy I thought he was Marilyn Monroe? Oh, it was oh, just like, as soon as he walked down. in the room, just like laid down like, hello. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a drink. Set- setting is also important. Depends oh. where you are. Bedroom. Are you? Did you just get into the house? Mm-hmm. Like, and you're in the living room? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, She's propped up on the kitchen counter. Yeah. 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 Ooh, that's Depends hot where stuff. it is. Gosh, that's hot. Okay, draw the question. <laughs> I love how well prepared you guys are. We try <laughs> to be. <laughs> We're professional when it comes to sex. We're like, let's talk sex relationships. What is something it. you pretended to enjoy for a partner <laughs> but actually hated? <laughs> <laughs> enjoy for? 
Yeah, yeah, like maybe you're like like a, like a sexual act. No, oh, well it doesn't anything. have to be just anything. I pretended to love to go to the dunes and go dirt bike riding with Chris mm. when I met him, and I fucking hated it. <laughs> I, hated I pretended being in the sand all day with no beach. I pretended to really give a shit about space for a long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> space is cool and all, but not for this like is, this an is, hour. This is probably gonna get a lot of flack, but I hate watching movies. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. You're I, more conversational. I, I enjoy I conversation more. I feel like Respect. nothing i feel like nothing really gets done okay you're just kind of just hanging out I, I know like vegging out is cool but for people who like to watch a lot of romance movies oh, or <laughs> just a lot of a lot of anything it just like i feel like it kills the mood and the yeah. relationship okay oh. so no yeah. movies you're like netflix and chill you're like mm -mm. like let's mm -mm. just skip the netflix so what's an idea for okay that's a good question mm -hmm. though most ideas is like okay let's watch netflix and chill what's a good idea what's a good date idea yeah a good date idea yeah i think that was one of our questions too yes. so i like to do more interactive dates um it depends on the person you could do anything from from hiking or if they're more mm -hmm. playful you could go to things like like sky mania yeah. like mm -hmm. to bring out like the kids yeah, meow like wolf the, like open meow so you wolf. can do stuff like that What's yeah meow that's not wolf? it's an interactive In art exhibit oh it's amazing oh. it's amazing one of the hottest yeah. first dates i ever went on was at the haunted museum we had just met in person right before we walked in and it's a, like a tour where you're not supposed to be talking on and you're supposed to listen to the tour guide so it was all very like touchy-feely on the first date oh. when, when i go on a date i try to take them out of the setting that they're familiar with Ooh. so if i met them at work on on the strip i try to take them out into nature or mm -hmm. if you do a little social media digging find something they used to do and mm -hmm. then try to get them involved in that okay all right so next question do you have a sexy time playlist ready to go yeah no, I don't. Oh, get on it, dude. Oh, yeah, Jake I from don't. State Farm. Yeah, <laughs> no. but, but we also we also talked about like if this guy has a, <laughs> we walk in his house and it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> like, oh, like Marvin Gaye comes on or something. We're like, bro, us being such music heads from the radio world, yeah. we're like, we're definitely judging you on yes. the music. We're like, is this is this the, the right transition <laughs> though? Uh, honestly, yeah. I would usually just throw on like a Spotify playlist. Okay. Okay. So we have Go a to? very curated sex playlist, mm -hmm. so you can use. It's collaborative. You can find it on Perfect. Spotify. You'd be like, all right, but it might be, it might be a little. <laughs> Hold on, let me pull up the first song of there. Just see like if it works on, in a dude's favor, because you can see like a girl putting on a sexy time playlist. It might be a little different than a guy's sexy time playlist. Oh yeah, because like, mine is like Portishead and Lana Del Rey and The Weeknd. Oh, that might really. She'd be like, oh. What? You know? So you, you're allowed to uh, go on my Spotify playlist and use the slow and sexy one. It has exactly 69 songs on I it. Want, let's see what the first perfect. song. <laughs> let's see what perfect. the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I had just, it, and that was just random. How long we, is it? How many oh minutes? God, it's hours. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, for music, oh also God. context, it depends on were you drinking? Were you on drugs? Mm -hmm. Is there? God. Yeah. 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 Because no, time. there, there's times when when I've taken like when I've done coke or, or Molly and you need to prepare for for longer playlists or like electronic music meshes oh. a little bit better with Molly. Yeah, yeah, it has to be the right vibe. The vibe. So with this one, the first song is "Close" by Nick Jonas and Tove Lo. Close. Oh. Do -do -do. I yeah, want you I mean, close. if a guy put that on, I'd be like, ah. Yeah. Okay. A little soul. But I it. also have like my ratchet shit playlist. If the vibe is right, like that's what kind of sex we're having tonight. Like <laughs> the Doja Cat comes on. There's like, a lot of Post Malone in here. I was having a moment with Post Malone. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was never big into like ratchet music. I, I always felt like beats worked better for uh, sex for sex yeah sure. ratchet I'm, is more like the workout playlist. yeah i was gonna say it's the workout <laughs> playlist but every now and then if the ranch uh, the raunchy lap dance comes out you got to put the ratchet shit on oh, yeah you know oh just yeah the whole thing so do you care have you ever done karaoke and stuff are you into lots, that i've done lots of karaoke okay. terrible, At terrible singer but i'll, I'll get up there I'm, oh, not a, I'm not afraid i'm not afraid of embarrassment go what's your go to what's your go-to jam <laughs> Any okay. classic rock, I'm right. very good at. Ooh. I grew I grew up on classic rock. Believe it or not, I used to have long hair, like down to my ass, for all the way through high school. Him and Uncle all Chad. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna need. Did to not did not work out well for the sex life because I went into college virgin. Really? really? Yeah. Girls in high school aren't ready for long hair because yeah. they need to have the long hair and be the stars. You can't be long hair 
unless you find that cool. And there was a holdout period for a while. I actually, funny story how I lost my virginity. It's it's like such a <laughs> it's like a typical <laughs> Vegas story too. Uh, win- Cherry Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Winter, <laughs> it's not sexy at all. <laughs> I'm sure uh, I win- can beat you. Win- it was winter break my uh, college year, freshman year, and a bunch of my high school friends were back in town, and so we threw a party at Planet Hollywood Hotel, mm. and we we're all there drinking. I don't forget, I forget the time, but there comes a point in the night where we're sitting, or there's like 15 of us in the bathroom, and we're in a circle, and we're just like drinking. Doing coke. And <laughs> this is this is yeah, this is before the drugs. Before okay. the drugs, it was just it was like bathrooms. Just, that, yeah, before before the drugs. That's when and the bathrooms <laughs> are just huge. You can hang out. It's like the other room. And and somehow we got on the topic. Of course, eighteen year olds talking about sex and virginity. And I was like, I'm still a virgin. This girl looks at me and it's like, we could change that right now. Yeah. <laughs> so we go Respect into the bathroom that's like two feet away from everyone. <laughs> where it's, it's one of the bathrooms like where it's s- just a toilet and a door. Seven oh minutes in God. heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Respect to that girl. Wait, were you guys playing spin the bottle? <laughs> Respect to that girl. Uh. I wish I could say mine was. I lost my virginity in the front seat of my '94 Camry. <laughs> that's a, that's talent. But <laughs> we were parked in front of the Mormon temple. <laughs> The oh big God. Mormon temple up Sunrise Mountain. Oh, on yes. the east side. Yes. On the east side. Yes, yes, that's where I grew up. Same, um, same. <laughs> El Dorado is where I was supposed to go. Oh, that's not shop, where I went. Shop, uh, I went to LVA, though. <laughs> I was an academy brat. But yes, I lost my virginity in front of the Mormon temple. Was it with a boyfriend, or was that oh, a party? Yeah. No, he was my first boyfriend. We st- we're so cool. Uh-huh. He's still cool. He's trying to be an MMA fighter or something. I don't know. He would probably kill somebody for me. I don't know. <laughs> I just remember I was young and I was like not taking my shirt off. <laughs> I was like, no way. <laughs> I didn't get boobs till I was like 17. <laughs> so that shows you I was young. Anyways. <laughs> uh, I don't remember how old I was. Yeah, I'm not saying. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I was at a border age where I was like, it was like right around my birthday. So I was either one age or the other age, yeah. but I was, it was high school. I was still in high school. Yeah. 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 yeah I had no, no love in high school. I was just, Aww. I was just that, that friendly guy with long hair who just got really drunk and hung out. But I cut my hair going into college because there was a lot of girls that was like, yo, if you cut your hair, you'd probably be very attractive. So I did it. Turned out very well afterwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good for you. I love I'm that. Trying, do you have pictures of you with long hair? I, I do. You, you apparently didn't scroll deep enough into the Instagram. Okay, probably we're, didn't. We're going to need a long hair photo to okay. add to the episode okay. photo. I, okay. can you, I used to actually be fat too. So. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. It was I, not a good look i don't even believe it. you were talking about like intermittent fasting on yeah uh, i was looking yeah. at some and i was like oh i i do that sometimes yeah i do that sometimes purposely or accidentally kind of accidentally yeah. but i was like i'm just intermittent fasting today i guess so you know you're going through drama or whatever yeah like, oh i guess i'm just fasting today but yeah it is smart we're gonna we have to talk more about that but we want all the sex now so we can't go yeah. back <laughs> all right all right here we go What's worse after a first night hookup? She asked to use your toothbrush or asked <laughs> you to pay for her Uber. <laughs> <laughs> toothbrush, for sure. I think I think the paid for Uber is implied. At this yeah. Point. Yeah. She's at your house. She's <laughs> like, I remember somebody using my toothbrush, and I was like, get the fuck out of here and take that with you. <laughs> like, how dare you? No, you just do the, you put the toothpaste on your finger, and you do the quick like yeah. thing, and then you do the mouthwash. Yeah, a toothpaste, a tooth, yeah. sharing a toothbrush, absolutely not. If you no, are a absolutely not. If you are a single, I lose respect for that. Yeah. yeah. If you're a single person, always have mouthwash. Or if you're like a known bachelor and you know it's a what you're gonna have some one night stands, it's okay to have a few extra toothbrushes in your medicine cabinet. <laughs> the, you're like what? Or you can be like, I just bought this travel pack. I was going out of town next week. You'd have to <laughs> like excuse, play it yeah. off. You'd have to like really play it off. I I'd don't like, know. Okay. <laughs> well, if it's somebody you're trying to date, yes. But if yeah. it's somebody that you just were like, this is what it is. It's right? got a drawer of condoms and toothbrushes <laughs> and like maybe some tampons. You never know. She's gonna want a toothbrush. She's gonna want a shirt to leave with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the, the, the Jersey Shore, who went with my T-shirt and my boxers home. You just make sure you have your cheap sunglasses on the bedside table that she can use as she walks out of the house. They used I, the, they did that in the, the 
the Boys and Girls Guide to Getting Down movie. Oh, what a good movie. That was a good I, movie. I, I haven't done this, but when I lived at the fraternity house, I knew brothers who actually ordered the Uber while the girl was still in the bed. Oh. Ooh. Damn, that's cold. That is cold. <laughs> Those girls knew what they were getting into. Mm-hmm. What was your fraternity called? It was called A-Pi. A-Pi? A-E-Pi. Yeah, A-E-Pi. It's a Jewish, we had a huge fraternity house. It was six bedrooms, 4,000 square feet. And how many dudes were in there? Uh, so six guys lived there, but we had probably nine couches. And there was, there was anywhere from 30 to 50 brothers. Oh and there would be girls sleeping on the couch at all times. The parties were the craziest. Oh, my God. I the par- We used to call it the Pi House Graveyard. You'd wake up in the morning at like 7 a.m. Every couch is taken. You'd find like underwear on the ground, jello shots. Why didn't we go to college? Uh, <laughs> I, you know why? I didn't go. To, I went to frat parties in high school. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I did. They, fra- yeah. The frat parties would get crazy. Yeah. And it's living in the fraternity house, it's extremely, extremely easy to get laid. I had, yeah. the, I had the master bedroom, and so we would try. Oh. It's probably, oh. probably, di- probably, probably disgusting, but we would try to do things called twofers and threefers. <laughs> <laughs> where you try to <laughs> hook up with two or three girls in one night by the end of the party. It's, it's not At some- once? <laughs> oh, I definitely accomplished that before. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that most men in threesomes like, are like, I don't know what to do actually uh, so, so <laughs> i've actually had a, a threesome both ways okay so me too the the legendary eiffel tower that everyone had talked about in college <laughs> got to complete that one okay explain to explain the eiffel tower explain the <laughs> to eiffel our tower. keepers who don't know yeah. so even though the, they do the eiffel tower is like the the frat guy's dream it's like <laughs> it's like the the thing you want to do with your brother it's like how you get so <laughs> like <laughs> extreme like, fun there's and high-fiving during just, just imagine <laughs> what an eiffel tower looks like and so the guy <laughs> the guys are the, got, the outside pieces, and uh-huh. the girl is the middle piece, and so she's bent over, yeah. and there's a guy in the back that's hitting it from the back, and then the guy in the front yeah. who's getting like a blowjob, and then the guys, you look at each other, yeah, eye level, and then you take your hands, and, <laughs> and you and you high five to, to complete the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> to Jesus complete it, Christ. and then and then when you lock hands, you can go back and forth faster. <laughs> <laughs> Increases oh the motion. <laughs> 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 it's the frat wow. guy's dream. <laughs> that is brilliant. Yeah, that and is. I love it. And that's that. You know what? That's to all the straight guys out there who do. When your woman is like, "You want to have a threesome?" and you get another guy in it, and you're like, "No, that's gay." Nope, it's no, not. It's, it's not. It's, it it's only gay special. if dicks touch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> only this word's happening. <laughs> but is it? Like, what if it's just a accident? <laughs> that's the risk you're willing to take. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, uh, yeah, I would try to accomplish this a handful of times <laughs> G- uh, girls would generally say they were down and then back out last second but this this girl was definitely ready for Dear it God. she we, we came back from a, a club night and we yep. came, went into my into my room closed the door and we started playing uh, FIFA it's a soccer game on the Xbox <laughs> oh this, my and God. this girl this girl she opens the door and it's like 2 30 at night and she gets in between us and I score a goal and she starts making out with me and then uh, where we were like him off the <laughs> no. other guy and i imagine <laughs> right? that's the move and then uh I, f- I think I proposed this, and I was like, you have to kiss whoever scores a goal. And so then I kept <laughs> scoring. It was like 5-0, and she kept kissing me. And then I, we looked at each other, and I started letting him score. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like, I got you, And then he, he, he was just like, we should just have a threesome at this point. And she was like, are the lights turned off? I've never turned my head so fast. Oh, <laughs> 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 wow. All right. Oh I respect that. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. One time I tried to have a threesome at a party, and this girl actually kicked my door down mid-party. because I don't know if she was jealous or what the case was. <laughs> kicked it down and ruined it, and people flooded into my room, and, oh, God, her her, pan- her pants were down, my pants were down. Oh, oh my God. It was a bad scene. This was some girl who was into you, and you blew her off halfway through the party <laughs> yeah. for the girl who was ready to go. There'd be uh, all kinds of weird stuff like that. <gasps> Ladies, yeah. don't be the weird girl who kicks down no, the door. Yeah. No, no. And gentlemen, don't be the weird guy who kicks down the door. Yeah. It's very toxic and abusive behavior, and we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Not Un- KIC approved. Uncool. <laughs> uncool. <laughs> it's very uncool behavior. Dude, I don't know if we can top much more of this conversation. <laughs> I don't either. We've got some questions, but you yeah, just. There's all, all kinds of weird, strange things. I, I didn't partake in this, but. 
the guys would try to have sex with girls on the roof. That was a thing yeah. for a while, and then they'd take the girls' panties and put it on the chimney. Yeah. So at one point, there was like five panties up there on the chimney. <laughs> you go up there, God, like, guys yeah. are so fucking weird. <laughs> when the girls hear about it, they're like, I'm going to get mine up there. Yeah. Girls are just as bad. Yeah. Just play more coy, because, you know. I don't know. I don't have a collection of dudes' boxer <laughs> briefs, you know? The thing with fraternity houses is there's so much, like, random shit laying around the house, too, that could just be, like used as a ploy like we one time we created this chariot for a philanthropy and it was sitting on the side of our house and this girl gave me a blowjob in the chariot <laughs> <laughs> this and is she's for like, our like, children's you're, foundation it's like you're <laughs> <laughs> i literally felt like a king <laughs> wow all oh, right. like all these props and yeah. stuff you're like this is this is perfect oh my god yeah it's it's a madhouse and in, in in fraternity house you guys like do good in school and yeah. you can go if you, can you go back to school and get in a fraternity <laughs> is that like straight out of co- straight out of high school kind of honestly thing? you don't need to do fraternity stuff if you're on a tour bus weird shit happens <laughs> <laughs> if you go to a house where a bunch of comedians live weird uh-huh. shit happens <laughs> when the strip clubs open back up oh they have oh go look at the pasties <laughs> i okay before we go though i have to say jake um you have very long eyelashes i've noticed and i'm quite jealous of them. Thank <laughs> you. so there's that but we gotta wrap this up i think this has been so fun yeah. because we've never had a bachelor on i don't know why <laughs> It's just never happened. We've because had some we gentlemen. Like women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. We like female empowering over here. Let, we let's do. Be real. But I think you've given some great insight. Yes, like I agree. like uh, a guy can be wild and dangerous and fun and cool and sexy, but also very smart. Very, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what your podcast is all about is really opening up and being very genuine and honest and raw and really thought provoking conversations and I respect that and I love all these layers that you Mm -hmm. know the average dude on your tinder could have you know yes so you are not on the apps right now no I'm not sorry ladies waiting for Vegas to find some normalcy and go out old school yeah you don't you don't want to be out in a mask at a bar with like (laughs) Oh wait, you don't drink. That's you know, right. I might, I might partake in the summer. I, one of the reasons, mm. I qu- one of the reasons I quit is because I wanted to focus on myself. I always oh, wanted to be really successful. You. And there was a point where I got so coked out of strip club, I spent seven thousand dollars in the private room. Good, good oh. lord. Oh. <laughs> you know, uh, I but, know her. <laughs> <laughs> it she hurt. was you. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt, and that was kind of the that, red w- wig. that was one of my that was my one of my like epiphanies or moment of realizations yeah. where I was like, I need to get this back on track. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'll and do so, it. So yeah, yeah, so I quit and just started focusing on myself and do different businesses. And Good you know, you. it wasn't like a permanent quit. I just felt like once I attained a level of success where I wanted, I felt was right, then I'd get back out to partying. And Respect. I feel like when when you're confident and you know you have the resources, you have money and a passion, then attraction for women tend to gravitate towards you. Oh, yeah, Yeah. for sure. If you can't put yourself on a certain level, you can't expect that from a partner, too. Mm -hmm. What kind of people are you going to be attracting? (sighs) I attract the guys I feel bad for. (laughs) (laughs) Stop that right now. (laughs) Come on, you've seen them. (laughs) We're turning it around, guys. Before we go, though, let's make sure that we send everybody... Uh, to all of your information where they can find you online and stalking send you all the dms and boob pics please he's not sending any <laughs> we're gonna fill him in on the uh, side dick the side the side dicks maybe he maybe you can get one of those out of him it's not super telling but it's very hot um but yeah where where can everybody find you uh, you could find me on instagram and twitter at jake Allen. most active on twitter but instagram's been receiving a lot of attention so i've been putting more attention there mm-hmm. and the podcast you just type in the guest list if you like to listen to it it's on apple spotify if you like to view it I record everything in the studio. Just type in Jake Gallen or the guest list on YouTube. And cool. You can find it there. And what days do you release your episodes? Mondays and Thursdays, two per week. It's getting to the pace now where it might be three per week from the, wow. the demand it's receiving. A lot of PR agencies are reaching out to me. I'm in Ooh. contact with like seven Ooh. different PR agencies. Wow. That are sending me clients. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> that is you. really you. incredible because this is something we all love to do. And it's, it's definitely something you have a lot of passion. You have to have a lot of passion to do. And to keep that hustle up is definitely something you have to have a love for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No so, doubt. Yeah. It's, it becomes a process at times. But when you're 
recording in that conversation, it, it's worth it. For it's sure. I think, like, sometimes when you sit down to record, you don't even realize what you've talked about. And you, like, I'll re listen to the episodes. I'm like, oh, I said that. We yeah. talked about that. I'll remember that. Right? <laughs> you get so in the zone. Yeah. And you learn so much. You become so much more vulnerable yeah. and you, you open up about things. We wanted to do this as something we can just open up about communications and relationships and not keeping sex such a dirty, you know, like, oh, God, he had. What was it called? <laughs> uh, Eiffel Tower? Uh, Eiffel, Eiffel Tower in college. He's the worst, you know, or like she's a hoe or, you know, just all that stuff is just. Yeah, yeah all that tabooness it it needs to be thrown out the window. It does. I'm like a boring mom with kids now, you know, but I she was. She still has a rockin' sex life. Yes, I do. <laughs> because we have a great sponsor who gives me all the toys. <laughs> I get a new box of toys every four months. So we get um, more than that, honestly. Yes, we do. It's okay. But yeah, we might have a little toy for you to send him home with. Yes. Like I got something out of that box. All right. I got something special. I think, oh, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe some flavored lube too, so you can you can counteract that. What's it called? Fluorescence. <laughs> Pro promescent. Promescent. The delay, the delay spray. Yeah. <laughs> the delay spray. <laughs> some flavored lube Fantastic. for you too. Okay. So, but we have one final question. Ooh. So we had this first date. Would you give us a second one? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. My place. Uh, My yes. place. Yes. We're on our way. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, it's already sold out. <laughs> <laughs> We're making it longer the second time around. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing the promise. It will bring the lube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. Bye. Bye. You can say bye, too. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Toodaloo. <laughs> oh, girl, that was so fun. Yes, you guys rock. Catch us every Wednesday. And for our monthly specialty podcast, please join our Patreon. You'll get that the last Saturday of every month. And if you rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, you can be entered into our super sexy monthly giveaway. And if you want to share your voice on the show, you'll find everything you need to know at keepingitcasualpodcast.com.